So is this is the worst over for United? What can we expect from the earnings today uh, after the bell? Let's bring in Seth Kaplan, managing partner of Airline Weekly, Jim Corridor, Air, airline analyst, excuse me, of CFRA Research. Uh, Jim, I'll start off with you. What's your most burning question for United on that conference call? Uh, the first of all, the question should be, how are they handling the situation? I mean, you look at what Delta did today, where they came out with uh, a, a statement that's going to empower their employees to make sure that they never run into this kind of situation. Meanwhile, United is still reviewing its operations. It's going to come back by April 30th. So they need to be quicker. They need to be more proactive in these kind of situations. And they need to make sure that's not going to impact the bottom line. Uh, I would ask them uh, what their traffic trends have been since the incident. Seth, what's your guess? And do you think what United has done in terms of 60 minutes prior to departure, crew members have to check in, they can't boot passengers after they've been seen. Is that enough? Well, yeah, and look, the big question is going forward here, generally one-off events don't have a lasting impact. But United kind of had some reputational issues anyway. The 60-minute thing, I mean, look, that's going to be an operational complexity, but they did this to themselves. They had to do something. You know, I think what Delta has done uh, is both more impactful in in terms of PR. I mean, you know, up to $10,000, even though they're very rarely going to have to pay anything close to that. uh, And it won't hamstring them operationally. The question here is, can United continue doing the everyday things that it's actually been doing for a little while to, to improve its operations and then overcome the reputation? issues that it rather fairly has at this point after what happened last week. Jim, we spent a lot of time debating whether or not we would actually see fewer people on United because of the incident. On the one hand, there were these calls for boycotts because people were so disgusted. At the same time, there's a lot of routes that you really don't have much choice as a result. When you say you want to know what they're, how they're handling the situation on the conference call, is that because you're worried that it could directly affect the bottom line when it comes to passengers buying seats? Now, we're not expecting it to directly impact the bottom line because, like you said, you don't have many, many choices. Also, the economy is doing better. People are feeling better about themselves. There is pent-up demand, we think, for air travel. And the airlines have done some smart things on the capacity front that's actually leading to higher ticket prices. And like you said earlier in the piece, United is going to see higher unit revenues. So these things are all positives. But United has huge reputational damage. Uh, I think most people who follow airline stocks know that United trades at a discount to its peers. This is a large reason why. They need to show that they can do a better job when these kind of reputational things come up, make sure that they can close the gap towards peers on that kind of valuation metric. These, these, Seth, to Michelle's point, these airlines have done a spectacular job of creating these impenetrable regional monopolies. I mean, you could hate United, but if you live in San Fran or Houston or parts of Chicago or Newark, you're not going to have any choices. So I think that these are these are probably heavily protected from the reputational point of view. But do they have a do they have a labor issue, though? I wonder. I wonder if you know we're going to see labor issues bubble up. It's already a hard job everywhere you go. People are yelling at the gate agents. They're yelling back. The flight attendants. Very very difficult job. Do you see labor trouble coming for any of these companies? Maybe not just United. Yeah, and Brian, I bet that United, you know, that botched initial response was probably because Oscar Munoz was, was afraid of, of criticizing his employees. I mean, look, there was a way to do it. He should have come out and said, look, it's not their fault. You know, I'm the CEO. I didn't give them the right tools to do the right thing. But I bet that that had a lot to do with just how cautious they were about just kind of acknowledging Walking the Walking on eggshells. That's what, yeah. First, when I read yeah. that, I thought, this guy is nervous about his he employees. He doesn't want to be sued. Ab- absolutely. <laughs> He's going to get yeah. sued. The good news, yeah. I guess, is insurance is going to pick up pretty much whatever this doctor gets. I mean, not United is my, my suspicion. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, no, and, and, and that, that was, that's, that's exactly what I think was, uh, was going on there for that. You know, in terms of choice, I mean, look, it's a less competitive industry than it once was. But in most big cities, depending on where you're going, you still have choices. And, and United flights are not going to be empty. But when you are an airline trying to be a premium airline, you know, you're not Spirit, you're not Frontier, you need revenue premiums. You don't want to be the airline of last resort. And if people are paying a few bucks less to fly United than to fly Delta, uh, all things being equal, that's a problem for United. Again, right. it's, you know, in little ways, been working to improve that, but uh, this is not going to help. Seth Kaplan, Jim Corridor, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.